few thoughts um, that have been on my heart all year, but especially with it being Good Friday and Easter weekend. You know, this is the most holy time for Christians around the world. And uh, if you've been following my posts and my videos, you know that I don't call myself a Christian anymore. I call myself a Jesus girl. I love Jesus. But what Christianity has turned into has greatly troubled me. And it makes me wonder with things being are the way they are with everything that's been revealed over the past year. A lot of Christians would probably say that if they were alive when Jesus was murdered, they would have been right there mourning. They would have been one of his disciples, but they never would have denied Jesus. But based on what I've seen over the past year from people who profess to love God is that a lot of Christians would have been Pharisees. And I think that over this holy weekend, we should all take a look and see, gosh, is there anything in my life, anything in my behavior that would have, that would lend itself more to the other side? Because if you look at the Pharisees, they were upholding tradition. They were trying to protect something from this intruder who they thought was a crazy heretic. So looking over the issues of 2020 that were revealed and really looking at the uh, events of the past couple of years, especially during Trump's presidency, election and presidency. Are you acting more like a Pharisee with the things that you voted for, with the things that you're shouting about protecting, or were you acting more like Jesus? I can't answer that for you. All I can do is examine that in my own life and try to treat people accordingly. But I will say that it has been devastating to see more being done in the name of Jesus to drive people away from the gospel in the past year than I've seen in my entire life. I've never witnessed so much hatred being done in the name of religion and driving away people who love God with all their heart because they see hypocrisy, they see hatred, they see judgment. I'm thinking about the um, Lil Nas X um, and his video, I watched it. And I'm fascinated that so many people are up in arms about it. But I'm like, haven't, hasn't the church basically said that gay people were going to hell? Hasn't the church kicked out gay and trans people and damned them to hell? So why would we expect people that we have literally kicked out of the church? Why would we expect any kind of reverence for a God that we told them hates them? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, think about the messages you're sending. I don't blame him for the video. I don't blame him, that's his experience. He's an artist, but he's also been hurt by the church. And as the church, as Jesus lovers, it's up to us to check ourselves and be like, hmm, dang, we were wrong on that one. So instead of coming at him with all of this hate and all of the clutching of pearls, do better. Take a moment to stop with the, the false outrage because really, <laughs> I mean, what I saw in the video is, 
there's just been so much hypocrisy with what you guys accepted from Trump, what you continue to justify in cases of sexual assault that, in, that involve your clergy members, that involve your presidents of your Christian universities. And y'all get mad over a music video when there are people being victimized and brutalized and you're not taking their claims seriously. I just, I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of reflection this weekend and my hope is that instead of looking at yourselves like, oh, I'm so glad that I'm not one of those people, that you look at your life and see like, does it actually line up with how Jesus lived? Because a lot of you guys don't even have any friends that believe differently than you. Is that what Jesus did? A lot of you guys still don't have any friends of color. A lot of you guys won't even consider that the people who are hurting are being honest with the pain that they're trying to share with you. So, I just really, really want to encourage us to think beyond what you normally think about Good Friday and about Jesus' sacrifice and about Easter because I feel like we've really missed the mark. And I don't know, I've been saying this since the beginning. I, I feel like this whole pandemic has been God saying like, all right, I'm put everybody on pause because there's a lot of stuff going on that I don't like and I'm gonna give you a chance to fix it. I'm gonna bring it all to the surface so that you all have to pay attention to what's been going on. And a lot of people still refuse to see it. So while, while we're thinking about Jesus, let's really, really think about what he stood for. And look, I'm not, redemption and forgiveness is possible for anybody. If you have, if you realize like, oh my gosh, I was wrong to, judge my friend or my child who has come out as LGBTQIA, apologize. Take a baby step, you know, apologize and give them space to maybe need some time and maybe not accept your apology, but apologize. You know, if you have friends of color that you haven't listened to, that you've tried to, but what about, that you've tried to play devil's advocate for when they tell you about experiences they've had with racism. Apologize. What better weekend do we have as Jesus lovers to really look inside and, gosh, you can always start over it just seems like the church is so full of pride these days that nobody wants to admit that we've gotten it wrong. <laughs> we've done a lot of wrong and there's been so much wrong done in the name of Jesus. But this weekend, I mean, my gosh, what a, what a perfect time to take a look at yourself, to take a look at your life and to see where you have fallen short and to apologize without expectation of how they're gonna respond. Because let me tell you, when I got out of um, a, a very legalistic church that I attended in New York, I went on like a mini apology tour <laughs> to some of my gay friends and some of my straight friends who were living lives that I didn't approve of, quote unquote. I went on a major apology tour with the people I love dearly because I realized, oh my gosh, I judged them so harshly. So yeah, 
I just, it's really on my heart. I want, let's not let this Easter weekend just be another Easter because this has not been just another year. If we really want to be Jesus, if we really want to live a life of love, let's get back to what that actually is. Let's get away from Christianese. Let's get away from church slogans. Let's get away from ideology that is not even in the Bible, but is part of church culture. Let's call out the male supremacy. <laughs> I mean, the fact that Beth Moore, look, all the stuff that Beth Moore has been through this year, all of the abuse, the verbal abuse, and the threats she's received from Christians. Like, it's, it's disgusting, it's gross, and we should be ashamed of ourselves. <laughs> and if you see it, you should be calling this out. You should be calling this out and listen. That's the biggest thing. It's like people don't want to take the time to actually consider that if a person has been hurt by something you said or did, that it's up to you to actually search your heart and see, is there truth to this? You know, instead of being defensive, instead of saying something is a quote unquote spiritual attack when it's like, nah, dude, you've just been mad hateful and people are starting to call out the abuse. <laughs> it's not an attack. <laughs> Check yourself. Start thinking critically. Take everything you hear in the pulpit and think about it. Don't just take it as gospel. If it's not in the Bible, check and see like, oh, is that opinion or is that actual biblical truth? And pray about what you read. I just, there's just been so much that has come to the surface this year. And I, I want us all to take this weekend to really think about if we've been following Jesus or if we've been a Pharisee. Because I used to be one. Let me tell you what, when I was at that church, I was the biggest Pharisee, but I didn't realize it. I was a Pharisee hiding in evangelical culture because evangelical culture breeds judgment and legalism. I'm not apologizing for saying that because that's been my experience. If we don't like it, why don't we change it? Instead of coming at the people who are calling it out, why don't you humble yourselves and actually consider like, huh, is there any truth to this? If you really love God, when somebody comes to you and says, you have hurt me in the following ways, it would behoove you to pray and say like, all right, is there truth to this statement? Because I don't feel it in the moment. I've had so many times where someone has said to me like, you hurt me by doing X, Y, and Z. And I didn't wanna hear it in the moment but I sat and I thought about it and I prayed about it and I have circled back a couple days later and said, you know what, you were right. I'm sorry, I wasn't ready to hear it, but I apologize. It's not that hard. We don't have to protect the gospel. The gospel stands on its own. Ask yourself when you, when you have a knee-jerk reaction of wanting to protect the gospel or wanting to return the nation to its Christian values, was this ever really a Christian nation? Were the principles that this country was founded upon? The murder of Native Americans, the enslavement of black people, the internment of Japanese Americans, the, the, the putting of Mexican immigrants in cages at the border, like, is this really a Christian country? There's a lot we need to examine. There's a lot we need to examine. And I just really don't want us to miss this opportunity. If you are a lover of Jesus, check yourself this weekend.
Really examine what you have been putting out into the world in the name of Jesus and see if you would have been a disciple sobbing at the cross or a Pharisee that says, well, they deserved it. Well, he deserved it. He shouldn't have done X, Y, and Z.